So, uh, kind of fill in for Travis so that y'all can understand. I attended a bond meeting about three weeks ago. I attended a bond meeting about three weeks ago. I was the only person from the community asked to go to this meeting. And I sat in the room, and, and my guys really get on me about dressing up, but I mean, this is me on a daily. This is how I gotta fight this fight, just being me. And I sat in a room full of suit and ties and bureaucrats and Houston Chronicle reporters. And what I heard was classroom waiver sizes. They have to decrease the number of waivers from 1,500 to, they have to cut them in half. They gotta get down to 750. What that means is they're gonna have to redraw the line, so to speak, for the districts. <clears throat> I also heard at that point, they started talking about the bonds. You passed a $1.89 billion bond, and yet you're now saying that we have a shortfall of $150 million. Now, I want you to think about that. They got a Chronicle reporter in the room. The education reporter, Erica Mellon, the next morning, there was a story written on that meeting, but there was no mention of the bonds. I've talked to architects that are afraid to come back to the schools that have to be built and tell you the information about the bond money. Now, I'm going to ask you a question. If you know, you know. Five years ago, how much was a pair of Jordans? About a hundred dollars, right? One twenty-five, so to speak. In two thousand fifteen, how much is a pair of Jordans? Two fifty, three hundred. So why is the cost of schools? You're gonna wait until it goes down. You're gonna wait till the oil prices go up. We're gonna watch the market. When I say these people are clueless, in this meeting, I'm listening to the resolutions. One, we could buy cheaper furniture for the buildings. Are you serious? This is how they want to cut the cost to make up for the one, one point, the, the 150 million. We could do that. We could delay the schools. Let's see if the market goes down. We could do that. Well, I tell you what, Manuel Rodriguez, we could change the light fixtures in the school to make the electricity bills cheaper. My question is, if. We are short of 150 million. You got 260 million in a bond reserve account. So why does my schools have to be delayed? It's simple. It's a big old game. And there's so many people that are attached to that particular fraction of money that it would turn your stomach if you knew some of the things that I know. It is very, very hard for me to stand side by side with people and know the whole time that you're trying to snatch the rug from under my feet. Do you want your schools built? Do you want the money that you voted on? Why is it that you have a $150 million shortfall when it's time to build the black schools? You have no intention of doing what you said you were gonna do. The realization is we don't have a, we don't have a money issue with this, with this trillion dollar corporation. We really don't. What you have is a lot of people making money in other areas. What you have is schools that are being built around our schools that were not included in the bond. So if you wanted to solve it, why don't you not build those schools, take that money, and there's your 150 million. So my question to anybody that pays property taxes, why are you sitting still? 
your whole community is being destroyed, South Park, Third Ward, because one, you don't want to build the schools that you promised us. You made us a promise. And a lot of people went on radio, TV, in churches, I think, Mr. Monroe, you should vote for this bond. Where are those people now? Where they at right now? You're not quiet if you didn't get what you really wanted. Somebody got the money. If you really think that we can wait for this delay in eight months of doing this, that I decided, God, this is what you want me to do. I'm going to do it to the best of my ability. So a lot of stuff you can charge to my heart because I don't say everything the right way. Why is it that now it's time to build our black schools and we not raising hell? If I walked up to you, I did this somewhere else, and I dug off in your pocket right now, you would have a problem with it. But when Ted Greer digs off in our pocket every December, and he takes our money on them tax statements, why are you not saying that? Especially the ones in key positions. You know why? Because when we went to the state of the school's address about, what, two weeks ago, everybody that was somebody in this city was in that room. Everybody's tied to the $1.89 billion. The question is, is do you want your schools built? Because if you do, you got to quit sitting on your hands. You will be like me. They will attack your personal life. They will try to attack you business-wise. Are you sure you want to sit in this room? Are you sure you want to make the noise for your community, for your children? Yes, sir. Because if that's what you want to do, understand what comes with the game. Mm -hmm. I had a friend tell me one time, he sold dope. He said, man, people don't understand this game. They don't understand. He said, you got to understand the crooked laws, the women trying to set you up, the dudes that's trying to kick dough you, the ones following you home after the club, you can never complain about that. I say, why? He say, that come with the game. Mm -hmm. So when you decided to go to the polls, did you understand, did you understand at that moment what came with that game? You decided to trust somebody that has been distrustful from day one. They've never followed through on any of their promises. So why would we trust these people with 1.89 billion? We'll live in eternity if we could live like Moses till we're 400. We probably will never see 1.89 billion. But them folks on West 18 got 1.89 billion. Two billion dollars, but yet you don't have enough money to build these schools. Now, I want you to believe whatever they shooting down the pike at you right now. Oh, we're going to build a new Yates. We're going to build a new Sterling. We're going to build a new Worthing. Well, if you're saying we're behind, which was what was discussed in that meeting, we're behind on building. Well, if I understand the numbers right, because honestly, my friend Michonne, she was a great student at Yates, and I was the middle of the ground one, so I took math for about 14 times. <laughs> but the numbers kind of make sense to me. If you're saying in less than two years, due to inflation, that you don't have enough money to build these schools, seven years later, how you got enough to build worthy? You really don't have enough to do that. But you are, not, you are not at this moment making the residents of Sunnyside feel great because you're building them a new school. See, when they throw that out there, they got word in the, in the lobby on, on, a, on, a, on a bill, you know, the little billboards they do. They got their school out there. 
Well, man, that should be all by itself because that school should have been built eight years ago. This ain't in this bond. It's not in this bond. So my question to you is, do you honestly believe that these people are going to follow through on their promises? Because if I'm going to be real about it, Terry Greer, you a liar. Harry Hartman, you a liar. Harrison Peters, you a liar. Boba Deal, you a liar. And in several different instances on public record, you can see where they lied. Ted Greer is in the middle of his exit strategy. He's trying to get out. And he's going to destroy as much as he can before he goes. He's, he's trying to get out. So if he leaves and all this is up in the air, how long will this delay be? I told people four months ago, and I didn't know. I said, and, 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 and my good friend Reggie Phillips heard me say it, Lamarck High School is in trouble. Uh, before he came on the news. Four months ago. Mm -hmm. Am I right, Reggie? Yes, sir. Mm -hmm. I had no clue that they were going to shut the whole district down. Now, I want you to understand something. We're either going to get these schools built in the next two years that are in the phase, I think it's phase two. If that does not happen, we have a major problem. Now, the question is, and then I'm going to sit down. When your schools are not built, who gets the $1.89 billion? Who gets that money? Who gets the money from Grimes being closed? Because there's always a surplus left when you close these schools. So where's that money? Where's that money? But I want, you said Bel Air, and I want to say this here. Don't think that they peaches and cream in this game. They care about nobody. They're taking money from everybody. So if you're saying basically we don't have enough due to inflation to build quote unquote Jack Yates. Well, when do you plan on building it? And if you don't have enough money, what are you going to do? That was their last option. Either make them smaller than what we anticipated and delete some programs. You want the good or the bad news? My insiders tell me they've already made the decision. You stood in the rain as a Yates line. You wanted 2,500 seats. They told you that night, we're only offering 1,300. Then they went back and they said, well, we'll give you 15 to 17. Guess what your number is now? They knew from day one what they were going to do. So will you accept that? I refuse to accept it. I refuse to continue to allow the Houston Independent School District to rape my children. I got two that got to go to ninth grade next year. And they not going now. As a parent, as a community member, as somebody, as we were speaking to two older ladies this morning, right before you walked up, I don't have to. Go watch the movie Salma. And they said, we don't either, because we lived it. <laughs> so if you understand about your bond money, about your communities, as Larry just spoke about, you're in the middle of Salma right now. Hmm. But here's my thing. You know, I'm going to step on a couple of toes. I told a dude two weeks ago, he like, man, you got to do this, you got to do that. I say, the only difference between now and back then, you were dealing with a smarter Negro. You were dealing with a more disciplined Negro. If we say we're not going to shop at a certain place, Black Friday, who the first ones in line fighting? <laughs> who the first ones? You're in the middle of Selma right now with your police violence against African Americans, with your schools being attacked. So the question is, as a proud black person, what is it going to take to wake you up? Get off your 40 acres and a mule. Your 40 acres is your house. Your mule is your car. 
Do away with the mentality. Because in about 10 years, with the way they're going with voters' rights, you may not even have it. Because now is your time to stand up and fight. And if you do not do it, somewhere down the line, we may have this discussion again. And I'm going to be the one to tell you, I live in the foreign country. I ain't got to do that no more. Because I'm gone. I'm, I, 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 I can't do it. I can't be the good slave because I'm getting killed the first day. I'm, I'm, I'm gone. So from the bond issue right now, it should officially, and if you think about it, they've never released an official statement about it yet. They've never released an official statement. Well, maybe they put it in the Chronicle. No, they didn't. They know how to bury stories in there. I done figured that out in the last three months. You will be hard pressed to find the article today on the issue that happened yesterday at one of our schools. They bury them real fast. So why have they not told us about this bond money officially? I'm a man, I can stand here and say this in front of you and leave here and say it again. I'm transparent, but these people cannot be. And the thing about it is, you got all these folks at West 18, at least 42 of them making $100,000 a year easily, but my kids don't have anything. We don't need, and honestly, I'm going to be honest with y'all. This thing that they throwing out there, that 21st century learning, can somebody tell me what is that? Because I learned in 20th century. I learned when we didn't have all the technology. Cal and Shabazz and, and my good friend Michonne, these are doctors. They didn't go through 21st century learning. You know what 21st century learning is? Stop playing with me and put them programs in my school. <laughs> Fund them programs. That's 21st century learning. But if we don't get our bond money, then so be it. It's not going to happen. So where is our bond money? You didn't have a problem building the first phase. You had all the money you needed then. And I, I could have sworn in the first phase, everything cost a little bit more. We've seen a decrease in prices in certain areas in the last two years. Well, it's the gas price. What gas got to do with you buying steel in bulk, putting it in a warehouse for a set rate on a contract? Well, now that ain't how we do it. You the dumbest person in the world if you didn't. KB Homes does not build houses based on how much the steel and the wood gonna cost. They know how much they're gonna charge you for that house because they've already bought the materials. Your materials sitting in a warehouse, man. Somewhere, the same way all them laptops were sitting in there. Oh, they pre-buy. They pre-buy, yeah, yeah, however. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So the question is, where's our bond money? When is somebody going to be transparent with the community? Because they're not. They know we have these meetings. Where the reps from any of the district? Oh, yeah. And what they plan to do with the surplus? Well, what they don't want to do is they don't want to deplete the surplus. They don't want to deplete it. They and, and I'm gonna tell you how to this is what they the purpose, which was to build the infrastructure. Well you just hold in the bank account. This is this is what they they try to do. Is why you know you you're more you know you're more visible, your reputation and all that, being a community leader. Why was Carolyn not invited to this meeting? Why you chose Malcolm? Hmm. You thought you could, why would you choose Malcolm? Because let me get him in here, sit amongst these trustees who now say, oh, I don't agree with that. I don't agree. I know it's a voting year. You ain't got to try to stroke my ego. Mm -hmm. You know I'm going to go back and tell my people everything I heard in here. Right. So I didn't come back and tell you, hey, them trustees was in there shooting everything down, man, because all that's a smoke screen. 
when Manuel brought up the issues with the light bulbs, he forgot to tell us that he already had the contractor to do it. You already had the contractor set to do it. So the question is, and then I'm done, where is our bond money? Because our schools have not been built. And for, is one school in particular, if you think about it, when you walk into HISD, you see the placards with all the schools, right? Yates, where your placard? Where is the diagram of your school? They know exactly how it's going to look. Oh, well, we ain't picked this. I got the paperwork there to show you every program that's in your school. They know where exactly every single classroom is going to be. So why is your placard not out there? You need to question that. But where's our bond money, man?